All right, so we, we've got the uh, this price swing identified, uh, marked by the uh, March 16th, uh, 2.30 New York time, uh, FOMC data release. And uh, we also got a vertical line marked off here. I marked off this low. Might be easier to see on the 15 minute chart, uh, but essentially uh, price is operating within this price swing. And uh, what I wanna talk about now is kind of uh, talk about a statistical methodology called the Martingale Principle. And the Martingale Principle is not a risk management principle. It, you know, it's quite the opposite, but the idea is that whenever you, uh, you frame three trades within the, the uh, greater uh, context of one greater trade, and as uh, you know, your stop gets hit for one trade within that larger uh, trade idea, then you uh, double the risk on the trade. And this is a, a principle yeah. that I use in my own trading methodology whenever I get the opportunity to. And the idea is that uh, the idea is that you, you double your risk every time uh, you get stopped out or, and people, you know, tend to, they hear the word double and, you know, they think you're doubling down on a losing trade. And, and hopefully in this video, I'm able to show that this is not doubling down on a losing trade. This is something different and distinct from that. And uh, it kind of ties into risk management because it's hard to talk about Martingale without talking about risk management. So one thing you should keep, you know, you should keep in mind is that most, a lot of people like me personally, um, you know, you want to keep your, your initial risk low and, you know, I'll take trades on my live demo trading account that kind of don't follow the same risk parameters, but on my personal trading account, my starting uh, risk on any trade is, is 0.5 or I'm sorry, 0.15 of a percent, which is much lower than yeah very low so so when i double my risk on you know people hear the word double but they don't understand it's doubling 0.15 so you double 0.15 it's still low it's still 0.13 you know 0.3 question yeah um how many times do you will you do that because obviously if it, you know it could stack up but you have a limit say i've only got room for Two doubling downs or three doubling downs? Yeah, I'll generally uh, do it three times. So, um, and then after I, after I hit, you know, uh, three losing, three losses in a row, then I consider that striking out, right? I struck out. And uh, then my risk profile will switch into the opposite, which is to limit risk. So after the third consecutive loss, then instead of adding risk or doubling risk, then I'll start having risk, right? So it's building up, sloping down. Right, I understand. Yeah, that so, makes a lot of sense. Because at that three mark, then you need you need the opposite. You need to start needing uh, systemic risk management to kick in to protect you from drawdown. But uh, so anyway, so we've got this uh, swing identified, right? This low to this high, um, just from the FOMC data release. And uh, let's go to a three minute chart. So there's swings within swings, right? Swings within price swings. Yep. Um, right. To like to right. So we've got, we've got, um, it's important to identify them all, I think. Uh, so we've got this low to this high, which would be seen on a one hour chart. It'd be more distinct. This low to this high, and then this low to this high. So there's three swings within this. So we'll frame, well we'll, well, we'll mark those off. So that, that kind of gives you an idea of where the stops will be. And you can kind of see how there's, you know, you know multiple invalidations within this, uh, the same run. So you can kind of see how I'm setting up the scenario where uh, you get three losses in a greater trading idea. Uh, but yeah. essentially here you have this small swing up that's only visible on a three minute chart, right? From this low, essentially roughly oh, up there. So say, you know, 
price runs up, uh, see where it is, runs up uh, essentially relative to these highs up here. So you could have framed a trade here. So maybe you, uh, let's say maybe on a three minute, on the very low time frames, right? It price is moving lower, starts to move around. You get this move up. Maybe you entered here, right? Right here, you could have framed it on a 618 or whatever, but you know, it's, say you entered here, right? And you entered with 0.15 risk there and you're managing that risk below here for the stop. And uh, so now you're in a trade with a 0.15 risk, but then we have to, you know, how does the Martingale principle get involved, right? Well, the idea is that, okay, so you're moving from that, we had that price swing on the small chart, and then you have uh, a distinction here, right? So this, uh, maybe you're looking at, this would be a you know, clean break or, maybe your point of release. Um, so it's not clear whether you use this high or that high, both are relevant, I think. So maybe you want to just, it's not perfect. You know, this general region is an area you want to be looking at. And uh, say that this trade that we're in collapsed, right? With 0.15 risk, then under the Martingale principle, then you would double the risk. So when it hits this level, then now you're now you're adding double the risk that you entered on this trade. So as, uh, see what I mean? And then yes. and then and then say you get stopped out on this trade, then now now we're going down to the uh, lower time frames. Maybe you identify this uh, level here is uh, a point of release based on your uh, trading methodology, uh, right? Where price came down to this. Price came. Yeah. Interestingly, what you're what you're doing with this system is you're actually activating the first and second um, standard deviations as well. You're actually improving your chances of your probability just by doing them. You're spiking down because it fails to hit the, it hits the first one. You've got a first standard deviation. You've got a reasonable trade. You suddenly here's the second one. Not only if you've got a bigger trade got a bigger position as well and you've got more chance of bouncing up so you're actually improving your probability your statistics as you go is that correct exactly yeah it's not a risk management methodology it's a statistical no. methodology that gives you a statistical edge based in the mathematics yeah that's quite genius so actually. you know double at each price distinction and uh, then we can go back out and you can see how, you know, if we go to a four hour, right, these uh, levels are less obvious on the four hour, but the, we saw these price distinctions on the lower time frames, right? But this low ultimately is uh, the uh, data release uh, that, that at least I'm managing my uh, position on. And so, yeah, you get the, uh, you have this area, 0.15, double up on this area, double up. And then if it hits that, you know, the, the major low that you're really anchoring your, your trade idea to, that after three, uh, three consecutive losses, then your risk model flips uh, in the opposite direction, right? So instead of doubling down after that point, then now you're having risk. Right. And then, then that's sort of a different discussion because then it gets into risk management. But um, I was going to take the question, would you, would that point be your invalidation point? Yeah. So that's the larger trade idea. So part of the Martingale principle is to, right. My, my idea is based on the high time frames, right? Because I identified um, what I consider compressed volatility at a macro level here and yeah, so just for people who haven't heard me explain this before, um, price comes down to a macro level, volatility contracts, um, you get this higher low relative to this low, higher high, or lower high relative to this high, and then higher low, lower high, so volatility is contracting at a macro level, and then you get the data release um, with the FOMC meeting, came in there, and uh, see now the four hour, 
and then price moves up. So I identified that level right there is my area of interest. And uh, yeah, and then and then part of the Martingale principle is is identifying that swing, right? The greater swing, and then breaking your trade idea down into three subcomponents. And that's really important because then you can uh, you can enter the trade and you can do this, right? Where you break it into three separate fractal swings within your trade idea. And that's when you can start utilizing the Martingale principle. Oh. And then oh. you know, I think the, uh, the tie in the, like the, the other part that you'd want to mention is that, um, you know, one, once you do hit that, that third consecutive loss, um, you know, it, it, especially if it happens, you know, pretty quickly, that's a good sign that, you know, something's happening that you're not aware about in the market. Um, and, you know, after you hit three consecutive losses, then, you know, you want some type of risk management principle in your system to kick in to prevent you from draw from taking drawdowns without you necessarily even knowing that you're in a drawdown. And for me, that's uh, after I have three consecutive losses, then I'll do the the opposite, right? I'll start having my risk on the next trade. So after three consecutive losses, I'll enter the fourth trade after those three losses with much lower risk, half risk, until the account equity hits the account equity it was at prior to those three consecutive losses, which is not fun. It's not fun to do. It's uh, kind of a pain in the ass when it does happen, but it's very important to, you know, as a self-protection mechanism. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of counts that you do is take things about trading or learning from me. All right. That's one of the trades that's important, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put the pin in the video there, but uh, that that's the uh, Martingale principle.